All right, so today we're going to go through some cyclocross power data. Now, this is pretty rare because most of the time you don't really get power data from cyclocross because most people don't have power. And what I want to show is that cyclocross is maybe not as punchy as people think. Obviously, it's very course dependent. Um, this is my friend Finn, who's pretty good at cyclocross. I coach him. He got 21st at UK National Champs last year. So, like, very good result. Has raced for GB in the past um, and has a lot of talent on cyclocross. So, it's a good person to look at because they've got good technical skills as well as having a pretty good engine. So anyway, um, he had power for most of it until this bit here, like got a puncture to walk and then change bikes. But anyway, so this first part, um, really, we're going to have a look at just, you know, just to see exactly how um, the race unfolded. So first of all, I think we'll go into the start. Now, the start, it doesn't pick up perfectly on this because I assume, you know, he just had started it like, but just before the race began. Um, but you can see he hit like 1300 watts and then basically like massive sprint into into this. This is like the start straight. Um, so basically started sprinting. So it's a little bit more powerful than it will see um, just because uh, just because the Wahoo didn't record. And then you can see this. There's like a long straight here. This course is pretty flowy. You can see again like 412 watts for 30 seconds, which is not too crazy of Finn into like a pretty technical section here and then up. Um, up a steep bank where they couldn't run some off camber corners. Actually, we'll just do a lap. It makes more sense. Uh, yeah. So then, basically, through the words off camber technical section. This bit was quite fast and flowing. You can see up to like thirty k an hour. And then this was just some like uh, corners and turns, um, including like some hurdles which most people just jumped over. And then background, and you can see like the long straight again. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so the start is really hard. Obviously, it's like across that makes sense. But if you start front row, it's maybe not as hard if you've got a good sprint. And then you can see like 370 watts for the first 58 seconds. And then into the technical section, it's sort of like numbers aren't crazy. You can see here, like coming out of here, he was actually following Cy Richardson who managed to win the race in the end. Finn was second until he got his puncture. But nonetheless, if you look at the power here, none of them are that bonkers. I think what this goes to show, in my opinion, is that Cycross is not as punchy as people think. Now, obviously, it depends a lot on the course. This course has a lot of long pedaling sections. But I think what it goes to show is that actually, like, okay, the numbers are always messed up by cyclocross because of the corners and all the rest of it. But I think what it shows to me, at least, is that you really need to be good at recovering from intense efforts. So you can look here. Most of the race, obviously, was 18 minutes, 0 to 24. But you can see there's quite a lot of time spent at the 800 watt range to sort of punch out of corners. Quite a lot of it at the 400 watts. And what it really means is that you want to be able to have your threshold around here so that a lot of this time when you're pedaling you're actually recovering and i think that's the key thing because you can see heart rate wise um finn's max is about 215 so 206 is not too crazy but you can see it it's like very up and down which again shows it's a consistent effort in terms of like in some ways but also there's a lot of time to recover so it's really like a tempo spike session more than anything else which i think people don't always appreciate necessarily and actually think um, you know, it, it's more spiky. But if you look at the difference, you know, th normalized 322, average 290, that's pretty similar. That's a pretty flat effort in reality. And I think, you know, you can see here, there's like some, it's up and down a lot, but there's no massive surges because you don't need to. And I think that's the thing is like, you, you go, do you do 800 watts out the corner, which for him is in a max sprint. And then it's sort of like just onto the pedals. Like you can see this long straight section here is like 400 watts for 40 seconds. And that's like the longest he is pedaling. So again, obviously, you're gonna, that's going to be over threshold, but then into the corners, you're going to recover. And I think that's the thing is like, it's really important to have that big threshold. Um, so you can do that and that you're used to recovering at a high power out. But, but anyway, we're going to go over to Finn's training um, because, sorry, this is, uh, we're going to go over to Finn's training just to so, show what sort of sessions I normally give him. Uh, so basically, like my our main thing with Finn was not to go too early. And a lot of it was really just focusing on big hours. So you can see a lot of tempo work early on. This is in July, um, sort of doing some tempo over-unders. Um, you'll see these were like a classic sort of staple, like just doing some sweet spot, like two minutes hard and then a minute easy. Um, this was pretty pretty solid stuff. I also did a lot of cross work. This was some sort of, again, more surgy stuff. So like really for the 45 seconds hard and then punch a little bit above it. But I'd say the biggest thing that we really focused on um, was okay some for sure some longer tempo efforts um he did an hour and a half at tempo which i think is really important as well um i believe he did this at like 300 watts or something um which was good like that was pretty confident you can see 300 watts heart rate 178 that's pretty good 
considering his max is sort of well over 200. That's pretty relaxed for Finn, which is good. Um, you can see like the other thing that was really important was these these things here, which are tempo spikes. Now you can, again, you can see actually they're like 45 seconds hard um, into like, sort of the tempo stuff. And um, sorry, I actually didn't, didn't do the session, rough. Uh, I think he's at, like, ill at this point, but we'll try and find them. Because um, for me, at least, I think these are super, super important because they boost your threshold, but also in a way that's very psychohot specific and really race specific in almost all intensities. But you can see here, like if we if we whack up the heart rate, what you'll be able to see is they sort of go up and then down, up and down, up and down. And it really allows you to have that punch, but then set in a good rhythm, which I think is key for cyclocross. Um, in terms of sprint workouts, don't do too much. Finn's super anaerobic, so it's sort of okay. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty excited to see where Finn goes this year. Last year, yeah, 21st in national champs, so hopefully he can get a better result. But yeah, the conclusion of this video is that cyclocross maybe isn't as punchy as you think, and actually having a large aerobic ability is super important, um, as well as the ability to recover at a high uh, power output. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy this video, and I'll see you in the next one.